Hi, and welcome to another in the 15 minute AI series. In this video, we're going to be having a look at an open source product called Open Web UE. But before we look at that, I want to quickly cover another tool called Docker. And the reason for this is we're actually going to be using Docker to deploy web open web UE. So Docker is a, a platform that simplifies building, sharing and running applications using containers. And containers are lightweight portable units that bundle an application with everything it needs to run. So that includes your application code, runtime libraries, dependencies. It ensures that it runs consistently across all different environments. So that could be on the Mac, Windows, Unix, Linux, anything that you may have. So by launching an application as a Docker image, you can quickly deploy it and you'll see just how quickly with this example and not worry about any system compatibility issues. I will put a link to Docker, certainly in the description. Uh, but now let's get back to the product at hand. So Open Web UE is a self-hosted AI platform and it's designed to operate entirely offline. Um, it supports various large language model runners or inference engines such as Olama or any OpenAI compatible API such as uh, TGI from Hugging Face and it also has a huge amount of built-in tools and it looks great and that's the reason why I've been looking at this. So in our last video we looked at using Alama as a way to run our models locally and that was for two primary reasons one being cost and the other being security. Everything's local there's no issues around privacy. One downside though mentioned in the video with Alama was its very limited front end um, and as promised I said we would look at graphical front ends that we could use with Alama, and the first of those in this episode is Open Web UE. So before we actually delve into looking at Open Web UE, just want a quick reminder of what Alama actually looks like. So switch over here, we can go to Alama Run Llama 3.2. So this will actually run the Llama 3.2 model entirely locally. So let's go back to something we know write a poem about winter. There we go, it works perfectly. Everything looks great, except obviously the interface and the front end, very limiting. Now, let's see how we can actually give this a fantastic looking front end. So I'm just gonna go across to the Open Web UE GitHub page. So this is where You'll find all the instructions, and in fact, you'll find the entire code base, seeing as this is open source. And you can download, have a look at the code if you want to, or you can just go directly, as we will do here, if we scroll down here. There's several different ways of installing this. And what we're looking for is the Docker install. So here we are, quick start with Docker. And once again, there's different command line options here, depending on how you've actually installed a llama so on my machine a llama is installed as a service so it's on my computer so we're just going to copy this command here so this says docker so that's the containerization software i spoke about earlier on run minus d and this shows which port it's going to run on so let's just copy that and then if we go back across to our command line Go to the other window here i can just paste that and i can run that i'm not going to do that here because i've actually currently got it running window let me go up to here we have a look i'm connected to local source or local host sorry port 3000 the first time you come in you can actually create a new user i've got a user already so i'll be just signing in here and here we go we're now at the front end should be fairly familiar to those, certainly this part of those use chat GTP, something similar. Click up here, there's actually a drop down showing the models I have currently have deployed. First things first, let's just try it out. So I write me a poem about spring. So this is currently using a Gwen 2, latest model, running locally, deployed on Alama. Here we go. So we've got another poem there. 
some of the things we can do here obviously we can ask the same question to a different model and there's lots more we can do here but first let's have a look at how we actually set models up so click down here into admin panel we got several different functions or different menu options here. I'm going to go straight to settings and across here now we have another set of connections or certain menus we want to go connection and here I actually have a connection through to my local Llama setting so if this address there looks familiar that's the address that was in the command line that we pasted to de deploy this application if we click on this manage we can actually have a look at all the models that are currently deployed those remote models we can actually have a look at new models so clicking here will take us to Olama's website and we can have a look we can scroll down here we can have a look at different models so let's have a look let's see what we want to deploy um, let's go for a fairly small one I know what let's go with Gemma 2 there we go. so Gemma 2 got a 2B model there so it's 2 billion parameter click on that um, and this is obviously the command for running in Alama but we're going to deploy this and run this from our front end so copy go back to our web front end paste that in there and click the download button so pulling manifest here we go so that is now deploying that model directly from the Alama website um, and deploying this it will actually deploy this on Alama locally but it's being downloaded via this front end so we give that a, a few minutes to finish so there we go the models finished downloading and we can see that by selecting the model in our drop down in fact it doesn't actually show let's have a look so let's get out of that first come back up here let's have a look select the model here we go Gemma 2 latest great so just gonna close that out before going away from our settings I want to point out a couple of other menu options so one of these is web search so you can actually set up a connection so the front end will undertake a web search bring back the latest information and pass that in along with your request and there are lots of different search engines you can deploy here I suspect the best known will be the Google one you can get an API from Google for that and you can set that up and you can have that enabled maybe I'm going to disable that again there um, the other thing you can actually upload are documents so you can set one of the things you can do it's a full rag implementation and we will actually have a look at that in a little while so I'm going to save that, save that, I'm going to go back to our chat, this is our existing chat, and if you have a look in the drop down menus, hopefully we should see Gemma 2 there. Now one of the great things we can do via the front end, I'm just going to create a new chat session there. This plus button here allows us to add another model to this same chat session. Now the beauty of this is, we can send the same request to multiple models and check their response. So write here we go. So now we've got the and again these are both coming from Alama, so one will happen not exactly concurrently. So this is the output from Gwen2, this is the output from Gemma2 it may be you're looking at coding or something else one of the great things here we can also do under here we can have this read out loud to us um, what I want to look at is these evaluation so if you're particularly pleased with the response you can give it a, an uptick maybe this one here we're not particularly pleased with the down tick so great where does that go so all that information is actually stored so let's say you had multiple models deployed in your organization you can then go in let several models be released and then you can actually evaluate the responses based on your user base so if you go back to admin panel we go up to evaluations here so here we go so our models are here and these are the different evaluations where we actually looked at different models 
and whether they've won or lost in that particular response. So a great way to actually evaluate models. One of the other things we can also do, if we go back up to here, I'm going to remove that model. So we actually have another model deployed, which isn't really a model, something called Arena. So what this allows us to do, I do like poems, So this is not a real model per se. Arena actually picks one of the models at random. It doesn't tell you which model until you've actually evaluated it. So here, I don't know which model I actually used out of all the ones. So if I click on here, it's actually told me the response was actually generated by DeepSeek Coder. And then we can actually rate it here. And then we can say why I think it showcased creativity. And we can save that, which is great. Again, feedback um, for models or feedback for certain models that you've used here. The other nice interface change you can do is you come up here and you can change your prompt directly up to here and then you can resend that instead of copying and pasting and putting it down the bottom again. A couple of other nice little changes, a feature certainly. Click on the plus button here we can upload files and if I've got web search enabled I can actually enable it for this particular feature it will then undertake a web search prior to actually be sending the information so first of all let's just upload a document uh, let's go with I don't know which one I go with so this is the EU AI Act it's 144 pages of dense text this is currently being uploaded while it's doing that I'm going to point out a couple of other elements so here you can record your voice or you can actually call it as well so you can talk with this directly and you can also have so we've got text to speech we've also got speech to text all built in and if you connect this to a back end that generates images you can also have images that directly generated within this. So at the moment we've been talking entirely about a locally hosted. So when we went to connections and we saw how Alarm is set up, you can actually set a connection up directly to open AI. That way you can use all the functionality. Your calls are going remotely though, but the front end is deployed locally. And you can have them both running at the same time and what you will then have is, you will actually have both sets of models appearing in your model drop-down. So it's a great way of comparing local with remote. So let's just ask a quick thing. Um, okay, what is the EU AI Act about? So now it's using document we uploaded a PDF document it's a rag so now I'm trying to find so here here we go so this is brought back information directly from that document I think certainly for an introductory video I'm gonna stop this here there's a huge amount of additional functionality available but for starters I think this is more than enough for getting on with it highlights the huge huge um, benefits you have for actually deploying a GUI front end to a locally deployed large language model. Thank you very much.